Well, hi everybody, it's Sandy. Welcome to my YouTube channel where today I'm gonna to show you how to make a slider card. These are not new by any means, but I haven't made one in ages, if I've ever made one at all. And I thought I would use this brand new waffle flower set because they sent it to me as part of their new release and asked if I would show how to color it. So I'm very excited to be able to do that. The shark can be dressed up in pirate outfits and shell skirts or grass skirts. There's a surfboard, there's little swords that they can hold. All kinds of fun can be had for both little boys and little girls who are into pirates. And I think this would be very, very cute for any cards for them. So I'm gonna do a slider card. These are normally called penny slider cards. I'm not sure if I should call it a dime slider card because I realize dimes are thinner than pennies. So I thought I'd do that. And I'm cutting a channel in two pieces of cardstock, both a navy blue and a white, with the Simon Says stamp A2 curved card die. And this is uh, probably one of my most ever used dies. I don't use a lot of them multiple times and over a long period of time, but this one is just part of my staple because there's always a good reason to have a good curve, right? So I'm cutting two pieces and there's gonna be a gap in the middle for my dimes to go through. and. I have just the white one is Nina, so I can color on it, and the blue one is some Simon Says cardstock. And I'm gonna use these power tabs in the center of my dimes because we need to create a little thing to slide down the card. I'm gonna use about two thirds of one of these. I tried it at first using a full power tab, which does fit in the dime, but you want enough room around the edges of the coins for them to actually travel through the channels. So if you've ever tried this with pennies and had trouble with them, that I have some other tips during this video that are gonna help you too, to keep it from sticking and, and not sliding through. So on the white piece, I've got my Misty out and I'm gonna use it for stamping a little hillside that I'm gonna use the, the surfboard for. So I wanted a little sand bank on a corner of my scene. And then I wanted to put a, little, a couple little palm trees in there. So I decided to mask them out and I used my Post-it tape for the the more delicate items. Post-it notes work great for just that shape at the bottom, but the post-it tape works better when you've got a piece that you want the whole thing to be held down. So I've got my, my little tree and I'm gonna cut out just the right-hand side because I don't need the left-hand side cut. I can just leave it there. Well, that's, that's my kitty punch in the background if you can hear him. So now I'll stamp my second tree. Have that all ready in my scene. And as soon as I pulled that up, I realized, wait a minute, I wanna go use another image in the stamp set. So there was a little treasure chest and I put my mask back so I could put the treasure chest behind the hillside as well. And now I'm gonna stamp on a piece of heavy duty Nina. I, I realized that for the slider part that's gonna be in the front and flip around, I wanted heavier cardstock so it'll hold up better because obviously interactive cards, kids and adults, both, I guess, are going to play with them. So I, I'm stamping it on a piece of 110 pound Nina. And here you can see how it all came together with the little skirt and the little shark. And when you stamp things like that, just go from the front to the back. So I stamped the skirt first, then the shark, and then the surfboard. I'm gonna color this with some Copic markers and I'm gonna keep the coloring pretty simple because Waffle Flower said that since they don't usually do things that are coloring types of images all the time that it would be helpful if I would teach you guys how to do some basic coloring. So I'm gonna limit my color palette but I'm gonna show you hopefully how to do some fun things as well. I'm taking a C2 marker and generally if you're just gonna buy a few markers, I'll give you some advice on some of these colors that I'm using. And the grays, I often say just do every other one or every third one. So if you wanna do a C0, a C2, a C4, C6, or something like that, or with this one, I'm just gonna use the C2 and the C4. And here I'm using a zero marker, which is a colorless blender. I'm using it in a way that most people think you would do blending, because I'm trying to blend it into white but the colorless blender really pushes color away from it. It doesn't actually blend anything, so don't be mistaken by that. But I'm just trying to soften that edge of the C2 that I put down, and now I'm gonna go in with a C4 and add stripes, because the name of the stamp has tiger shark in it, and so I looked up what tiger sharks look like, and they have these little stripes on them. And when I add the stripes, it looks a little bit like I'm giving them dimension, because they have white bellies, so the whole you know, underside of the shark is gonna be white, and then it'll have these wonderful little stripes on them. 
And since I'm going to be fussy cutting out the shark, I didn't worry about staying in the lines on the outside part too, which always makes it easier when you don't have to worry about that kind of a thing. So I stopped for a moment to go look at my picture online because I wanted to figure out what the tail looked like. And I, I couldn't tell from Google, you know, you pull up Google searches on things and they give you like 10,000 pictures and all of the tails look different. I couldn't tell how much of it was from the lighting on the photos. So my tail and my fin might be a little bit off on that, but I could tell that there were definitely stripes on the tiger shark, which is probably how he got his name because he's got little stripes. So I'm adding a little bit extra of the darker gray color around the outside just to emphasize that a little bit more and then a few little stripes on the fins and i went it back in with the colorless blender again and you'll see a little bit more of the colorless blender and how that works but i'm basically like pushing some of that gray back into the colored area and just trying to soften some of that a little bit more I'm going to use one of my favorite red combinations. So if you wanted to just pick up a few Copic markers and you wanted to try maybe red flowers, red hearts, uh, red dress on a little girl, this is a great combination to try for reds. And it's, I think the only one in this video that has all three. So I generally try to do a dark, a medium and a light color. So the light color I color first and the, the shark body, since it bled it, blended into white was a little different. This is more standard for how I color things. I colored the R14 was the lightest color, so I colored the whole thing. Then I went in the darkest shadows down in his throat, and then I blended that with the medium color, the R37, and then went back in with the R14. That's traditionally for me, that's how I do almost everything, unless for specific reasons like in this video, a lot of my color combinations here are just gonna be two colors. So keep it a little on the simpler side, but I wanted to give you the three color information as well if you are new to Copic coloring. Oh, there's my kitty again. He's sniffing at the microphone, so you might hear some little whisker noise. <laughs> All right, so now I'm gonna do a little fancier coloring on the shadows underneath the shark. So please don't feel like you have to do this. This is just where I get a little crazy. Here is one of those places just under his tail where I left a little gap. So it makes it look like his tail goes up and then the end of the tail comes back down again when you do a shadow like that. It's a little extra fancy types of shadows. And I wanted to give the surfboard a little bit of dimension. So I took my dark and I just made a line following around the edge. And I didn't worry about making it really smooth. I just, you know, kind of sketched it in there. And now I'm sketching in some of the medium color. And now I'm just gonna go over the whole thing with the R14, the light red. And that's just gonna blend all of it together and make it all look really soft. If you wanna just color solid, just, just the red on the, the surfboard, totally fine. This is over the top stuff, which is kind of what I do. That's my signature stuff. But I just thought I would show you a little bit fancier stuff too. And then I decided this, this could be either be a grass skirt or a shell skirt. And I decided I wanted color in there rather than just having a little bit of brown shells or something. So I just did the grass skirt instead. And here's another place where the colorless blender can sometimes help. Some of the red went into the teeth. So I can put several layers of the colorless blender in there because that pushes the color away. So I did a little bit, I'll go back later and add a little bit more and just try to continue to push that color out. But sometimes you need to wait for that to dry in between. So I'm moving on to my little beach scene. I used the same green for my little palm tree leaves. And this E31 is a really great light brown color. And if you're looking for a good trio in browns, then I would go in either an E31 or 33, along with an E29 and an E37. But I'm only gonna use the E37 here because it's such a small image, we don't need a whole lot of dimension. But if you're looking for what colors to get, I will list the E29 in the description and stuff in case you forget that and you wanna go get that color anyway. If you color animals, it's always good to have a trio of colors for them because then you can make dark brown animals, light brown animals, that kind of thing. So here's another little fancy addition. I'm gonna do a long shadow. When the sun is kind of low on the horizon, you get really long shadows, and I can increase the, the look of this little hillside being rounded by just putting little rounded lines behind the trees for shadows. Again, that's over the top coloring, but it's a really simple thing to do that adds a whole lot to the effect. So 
if the, the brown is too dark, which I felt it, it kind of got too dark, you can scrub over it with the lighter color. And you can see I'm just kind of coloring over, over and over in that area, and it really do, does soften it. And I don't know if this is scientifically why, but I think there's, if you consider there's probably more of the colorless blender type of substrate or whatever in the marker in the lighter ones than in the darker ones, then the lighter colors will push away also the darker colors. So if you ever color a light one over a dark one and you wonder why it started kind of erasing color, that might be why. And here's a place where the zero marker also comes in handy. So I drew some dots with the brown and now I can also draw dots with the colorless blender and it makes little, not perfectly white dots, but it sort of erases color. It pushes color away. And if you look at them closely, you would actually be able to see that it creates a little halo around it because it's pushing that color out in all directions whenever you touch that marker to color that's already there. So I thought I'd use the same colors from my shark to color the little chest. And I'm just gonna put shadows on the right hand side. Keep it really simple with just two shadows. And then that buckle, I didn't really feel like adding another color to the mix because I'm trying to give you a limited color palette if you're just getting started with markers and don't want to go crazy. And the sky color, I like a B00, which is much darker than this, but a quadruple zero or triple zero are very, very light ones. And it's a little easier to get this look. So what I'm doing is flicking the marker. I'm laying the marker, the marker nib on its side right along that line where I kind of drew clouds, the little cloud tops, and then lifting it up as I move the marker. So I'm making flicking motions, almost like if you think of sweeping the dirt off of a sidewalk and you flick it off into the, the grass or off onto the street, it's that kind of a motion. So the coloring is just about done here. I do go back to one thing after I finish my little fussy cutting, but I decided to cut the, the shark out um, by hand because there's all these different pieces that need to be cut around and I was really glad that Waffle Flower didn't make us cut out all the teeth <laughs> so they have that nice big mouth that makes it easier and combining these images also means that I don't have to cut out any of those other little parts because that surfboard is just one little shape and I went around the edge with a dark marker in order to hide any of the, the places where I didn't fussy cut well. And then I realized I forgot to go back and add some shadows to the green. If you have a selection of gray markers like this C4, then you can use the gray markers to do shadowing on your other colors. So if you just get one green and a gray or two, then you can mix those and get a perfectly fine little bit of shadow on them without having to buy a whole bunch of markers. So it's a, a great way to stretch the markers that you do have by using some of the grays to shadow. Now I wanted to put my sentiment on and I used my powder tool to prepare the area that I wanted to stamp it and I'm going to use this Mama Elephant ink because I wanted to put a pop of red in there since we have red on the shark and I thought it would be fun to do that. So off screen I'm actually inking the sentiment stamp and then closing it on there. This is the Misty that I'm using for stamping. If I hadn't mentioned that before, I can't remember if I did, but the Misty really makes lining things up so much easier. And there are a lot of videos, both on my channel and in others. If you search for Misty in my channel, then you'll find lots more on how this thing works. But I'm gonna put my clear embossing powder on. I let my heat gun warm up really good before I put this on there because then the paper won't curl as it gets heated up and then that's ready to just put some dimensional adhesive on. And I wanna put my adhesive on, but keep it away from the edge because I want that dime to have a place to roll. And I'm using the uh, 3M foam tape for this because it's a little thicker than the power tabs. So it's going to give the dime a little more room if the, the two panels are raised a little bit higher than the dime is, if that makes sense. So using two different levels of dimension. So I'm trying to slide the dime around to see if it's going to fit through really well and how easily it's going to slide. And sometimes you have to work in it a little bit. But I also had this idea, since I had my powder tool out, why not run some of the powder in between the dime and make sure the edge of any of that sticky is no longer sticky. And then I thought, wait a minute, why don't I do that inside the groove as well? and I put the dime back in, the dimes back in, and all of a sudden it slid perfectly through there, really easily. 
So next I trimmed off some of the edges because since I nudged things a little bit, there was a little extra white cardstock from the card base. Now I put another power tab on top of the dime and stuck my little, little sharky on it and then decided to put that onto the card and stuck that in the groove and sliding it in there is a little tough. So next it's going to be a lot of, you know, fussing around to try to get him to slide really well. But before I do that, I want to make sure that he doesn't fall out. So since the groove ends all the way out in outer space on the, on either side of the card, I just put extra dimensionals right underneath the top and the bottom on both sides. And that way the dimes are not going to slide out because the gap is not big enough. So I ran the dimes and the shark back and forth a whole bunch of times to just sort of, I don't know, grease the skids, I guess, and eventually got it to the point where it started to do this fun little spin thing. So he's spin, she, she, girl shark is spinning along on my card. And I think this is really a fun kind of interactive card for kids. It'd be great for birthdays or all different kinds of fun occasions. Thanks again to Waffle Flower for including me in the fun of the new release. And I will see you guys later. Be sure to leave a comment in the doobly-doo and subscribe if you would like to get more videos from me. And there's a link in the upper right-hand corner to my blog. I will see you guys later. Take care. Bye-bye.